So I was browsing Reddit and it came across a post by this user. He was having some issues with saving in ZBrush. He saved his work and he went back to open it later and he had lost a bunch of work. He was asking for suggestions. And this resonated with me because I think we've all been there where you've saved something in either ZBrush or Maya or any program and you come back and your work is gone or your files corrupted. I remember way, way back in the day we would like mess around with uh, Maya files, .ma files and like try to change things in them to like recover them and stuff. And it was usually futile, but once in a while you had some success. But beyond that, it got me thinking about how convoluted saving in ZBrush might be for somebody who's never really used ZBrush before. So this video is very much targeted towards beginners who are getting started and just kind of want to know a little bit more about how ZBrush works and how they can protect their work and make sure that they're saving their files correctly. So I just want to show you all the different kind of quirks and features about saving in ZBrush. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to know is that there's actually three ways to save in ZBrush. You can save your document, you can save your tool, or you can save your project. One is drastically different, and the other two have their use cases based on what you're trying to accomplish or how you want to work. So why don't we go ahead first and save each one of these file types, and then we'll look at each one individually. So first, I'm gonna save a document. I'm gonna go up to document, and I'm gonna save. I'm gonna make a new folder, and I'm just gonna call this necrodoc. This is my necromancer that I'm working on, so we're just going to save the document version of it. Next, I'm going to save a tool. So up in the top right, we're gonna to go to save as in the tool menu. And I'm just gonna go ahead and save. We'll call this necro tool. And lastly, I'm going to save my project. You can hit control S or you can go up to file save and just save that off. And that's gonna be the project. So why don't we go ahead and open each one of these now and look at the differences between them. First, we're gonna open the document. And at first glance, it pretty much looks like our project. My character's there and has all its pieces and looks normal, but you'll immediately notice that if you go to rotate or move the model, it's not going to move at all. And that's because, and what you'll quickly notice is that this is what's called 2.5D. So we've actually given up our model and now we're just in this 2.5D space. So there is no 3D information. Now, ZBrush has both a 3D section, you know, what you sculpt and create models on, and it has a 2.5D section. And the 2.5D section uses what's called pixels, pixels, pi pixels. I've never actually had to say that word out loud. Pixels? What a pixel is, is a pixel with extra information. It has depth, orientation, and material information. And so it's basically just a pixel with a few extra channels. And what this is for is to create kind of more complex illustrations within ZBrush. Now, this isn't really a feature or part of ZBrush that's really used. In fact, for this video, I tried to find some examples of 2.5D ZBrush illustrations, and I really couldn't find any. I do remember in the past, uh, there was a guy named Android Jones who used to kind of mess around with this stuff and was pretty adept at it. It doesn't seem like it's something that people really use anymore, right? We just use ZBrush for sculpting and creating amazing 3D figures, but it's important for you to understand what this is. And so, when you're saving your document, you're losing all of your 3D information and you're just keeping the 2.5D information. Next, let's open that tool. So to open the tool, we have to go back up to the top right panel. I'm gonna hit load tool. We're gonna bring it in and we're gonna drag it. And immediately you're going to see that this is basically our 3D model. There's uh, no bells and whistles here. It's pretty straightforward. Now, what we need to pay attention to to understand the difference between the Z tool and the Z project is in the tool panel. Now you'll notice when I loaded this, it loaded it as just a new tool in the bottom of that panel, but it has all those goofy brushes still that I was playing with when we had the document. And that's because we've just opened a single new tool. And that's the thing with ZBrush, you're gonna have multiple tools or subtools open at a time, so you can jump between them. And so we just saved that. And this has benefits. One of the benefits is that it's a smaller file size and saving the whole project and stuff like that. But before we get into those, let's go ahead and open the project so we can actually see what changes. So now when I open the project, you can immediately see a bunch of things changed. It stores all of our information about our project in that file. You can see even my background color was stored. So it changed to what I had previously. And you can also see up in that tool menu, all those brushes that we were playing with are gone. And now it's just the tools that I had in my project. So. The project saves a lot of information about what you're working on. So you can kind of imagine which one you might want to use for what. So if you're just doing like a simple sculpt or something without a complex project, like just a speed sculpt, 
maybe just save the tool off because it's a smaller file size and you don't need a bunch of information and stuff. Kind of just keep it neat and orderly. And then when you're working on more complex characters or you might have multiple tools and you have a lot of things you want to keep and you're fiddling with, uh, it's important to save the whole project. Now, if we look at the file sizes, you can see the file sizes are dramatically different in size, even with this specific project being pretty light. You can see we basically just have that one tool and we just have like primitives. Like it's not like I have a bunch of duplicate characters or anything in this project but the file size is almost like 60 or 70 gigs bigger. So that's something to keep in mind. Another important thing to note about projects is you can actually save your history in projects. And now doing so will greatly balloon your project size. So you have to watch out for that. In order to save your history, you need to go up to preferences, go down to undo history and make sure enable saving is on. Now there is a couple options in here. You can turn on compression and you can turn on optimize. And these will help kind of control that a little bit. You'll notice optimize is actually for when you're working in the project. So it'll try to optimize the active memory that the undo history is taking up. If you have a lot of history, this can actually slow down your workflow. So you might want to disable that sometimes. And then you'll see compression is for when it's actually being saved. It's going to try to compress that history to minimize the file size. Now, this isn't the only thing you have to enable. You actually also have to go up to file and turn on the undo history button up in file as well. So there's two places that you need to make sure that are enabled for your project to store undo history. So now you can see that we've added some history to these pants. If we go ahead and reopen the project, that history is now stored in this project file. And now, like I mentioned before, this does balloon the project size. So if you are at states where you're like, okay, I don't really need the history anymore. It might be a good idea to purge that unless you're okay with giant file sizes, but it always kind of makes me nervous when they start getting really, really big or just because I'm always fighting for disk space, um, but that's up to you. Lastly, I just wanted to mention a bit about file recovery. If ZBrush crashes on you and you're looking to recover your work, you can hit comma on your keyboard or go up to the light box button in the left hand side and go to quick save and you'll see that you should have quick saved versions of your files there. You can see that I have <laughs> Uh, way, 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 way too many. And if we navigate to the path that it says down here, you can see the Windows location of all your quick save files. <laughs> you can see that I have about like 100 gigs worth of quick save files, probably too many. I need to clear that out. And in order to do that, you can go up to preferences, go down to quick save, and you've got all your settings for the quick saves down there. How many you want to keep, you can purge them from there and a couple other settings as well, like optimizing the file sizes. And you can see even with optimize on, the file sizes of these are enormous. So it's probably better to keep it on. So if you're a beginner, I hope that was helpful. Or, you know, if you were just somebody who never really thought about it that much, the Z tool and the Z project both have their use cases based on what you're doing and how big you want your file size to be. Well, the document is pretty much useless uh, unless you're kind of into exploring the 2.5D stuff. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much dead and gone at this point. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. If you have questions or comments, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below and don't stop creating. I'll see you next time. Take care.